Let's take a look now at um, a situation that we will encounter extremely, extremely often and that we need to take a look at um, a, bit more, a bit more carefully. So for example, let's say that we have a simple program where we declare a variable, for example, an integer with the value of the initial value of five, and then we print that to the console, right? So what we would get here is the value of five printed here on the console. And then um, what we want to do now is we're probably, our program is super complex, has a lot of stuff. And for some reason, we want to increment the value of that, um, of that variable by, for example, one unit, okay? How would we do that? Well, we might feel inclined to say, oh, that's like super easy, Jose. You just have to say, well, um, if A was five, then the only thing that I need to do is say, well, the new value that A is going to have now is going to be six, right? And then I can print that to the console and boom, I'm done, right? I have five and now I have six, a piece of cake. And you might be right to a certain extent, but uh, and for a program that is so simple as this one. The problem comes when um, I do, for example, for some reason I decide that the initial value should not be five anymore, it should be 10. So I go to the beginning of my program where I have the main ingredients for my recipe, right? And then I rerun the program. The, pro the, the problem is that the program hasn't really broken. So there's, there are no errors, but the logic of incrementing the value by one doesn't apply anymore because all my numbers were hard coded. The idea that I incremented this value by one by just hard coding the new number that it should have, it's, it makes uh, the program not work with the logic that I'm intending. So, um, so there are, if I were to do this, basically I would need to remember that if I change this value here, I need to go somewhere in the code and then also update this to the value of 11. And Maybe for a tiny program like this one, you could get away with that. But trust me, uh, as soon as the program starts growing a little bit in complexity, this is absolutely unmanageable. Uh, it just will never work because you cannot remember uh, where to change these things, how many thousands of lines of code you have in your program and where all these things should be changed. Um, and also, and this is the most important idea, this approach of hard coding, this increment is not programmatic and you will hear me use this word a lot by programmatic i mean a logic that depends on the state of the program and as opposed to just some hard-coded values right so what i would like to do is i would like to implement here a, some way of making sure that no matter what this value is the result of this line is going to be that that value is going to increase by one so that I, if i ever want to change this initial value I don't have to go into the depth of like my thousands of lines of code in my program and update those values manually. And how, so how could I do go about that? It's actually pretty easy to think of. If you remember the idea that we were discussing in previous videos about how assignment works and about how the right hand or part of an assignment expression gets executed first and then the result of that gets stored on the left hand side then it's actually quite easy to understand that if I want to take the value of A and increase it by one, then what I need to do is I want to say the new value of A should be equal to whatever A is at the time that I am reading this line of code plus the value of one. As simple as that. And again, because the way assignment works is that this operation will be executed first. At this point, the value of A is the number 10. Then the result of this operation is the value of 11. And then that gets assigned to the left hand side, which is A again. So it gets that value gets overwritten on top of it. Remember how I was saying in previous videos that the equality operator in C sharp, I feel that by design is actually not a great oper It should look perhaps like more something like this. This doesn't work, but I think that, that symbol represents much better what is happening from going from the right uh, uh, value to the left assignment, you know? So that's it. So basically what I have now is that whatever my initial value for A is, the new result is going to be that value incremented by one. So I can change this to seven now 
and my code is still works with the logic that I intended. My code is a very, very programmatic because the logic still stands here. All right. Now, this operation, incrementing a value by one unit, two units, five units, whatever, is so popular and it's so commonly used in computer programming that there's actually a lot of shortcuts uh, about doing this. So for example, let's say that, um, let me actually take a pause and let me write here and I'll show you some of those shortcuts. Just hold on. And yes, I have written uh, a bunch of these shortcuts. So for example, um, you can see here that I can increase the value of A by any value by just saying whatever its value is, take that value and add, for example, the value of three. Um, but that operation adding by a number is so common that there is this symbol, the plus equal signs, which basically says take A and whatever the value it has, increase it by, for example, the value of five. Similarly, you can use minus equals to decrease by a particular value. You can use times equals to multiply this value by a particular value, or you can use divide equals to divide the variable by another particular value. Okay. And on top of that, there's two other shortcuts and these ones, you're going to basically see them all the time. Uh, there is a plus plus, which means increase by one and then and then a minus minus, which means increase the de sorry decrease by one. And oop, uh, oop. and if I run this code, what you're going to see is that um, the value of a is going to fluctuate seven plus three is 10 plus four is 14 minus three is 11 times two is 22 divided by two is 11 again. And then increase by one is 12 and decrease by one is 11. Okay, so this operation in changing the value of a variable, updating it by increasing, decreasing, multiplying is extremely, extremely popular. And definitely very soon we will start using increase by one and decrease by one. We will use them a lot. We will use them uh, for, for example, for for loops. We will use them all the time. This is the MVP of um, this is an extremely popular operation. OK, um, so if we need to start writing a cheat sheet or if we need to start tattooing things on our arms, the things that we really need to remember, I think this one a plus plus or a value plus plus would be a really good candidate. OK, cool. Let's move on to um, other topics on operators, such as, for example, precedence. 